How you doing guys? I'm Sean. Welcome to Rambles with my camera. Guys, today's ramble, today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I convert colour images into black and white. I get asked all the time what is my workflow and how do I do it. So this is this video here is going to do. Now I've got a selection of images that I took when I was up in Belfast last year. Um, a group of mods were actually heading out for the day and I, I came across them there and I took a couple of photographs. So I've picked this one here. Now, I'm already tweaked it. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to click the, the letter P here. I'm going to pick it. And the reason why I do that is just, and I'll change the filters to flagged. Now, basically, why I do that is just to get the other ones out of sight, out of mind, so I can focus on this one here. So, as I say, I've already tweaked this here. So, I've got the colors and the lighting the way I want it. I know some people would be, when they get the image from the camera, if they want to do a black and white, they work directly straight from the raw image straight into black and white without going through the colours. I do it the opposite way and I think it's the right way to do it because if I was to take that photograph straight from the camera and then flick it over like this here into black and white I would have to start tweaking the levels all the different colours I'd start sliding them about and I'd get a black and white and if I decided then to do a colour print of it if I was to click on colour after I tweak the black and white it looks crazy. So you're better off tweaking the colour first okay I just put this back away now. You tweak the colour first, get it all set, and then you work in the black and white. As I've just mentioned there, you can actually have done it through directly from the Lightroom. Uh, I've actually downloaded the, the Google Next collection. It's actually free, and I've put a link up above there. You can have a wee look at it. Um, they used to have to pay for it. Now it's completely free. And I think it's absolutely fantastic. So I've tweaked the colours. What I do is I go up and add it in. I go down to Silver Effects Pro 2. Now you get an option here of what way do you want your file format this copy going to be. You can have that in TIFF, PSD or JPEG. Click on JPEG. And the reason why I do that, if you keep it on to TIFF, you're taking an image. Now this file is probably about 22 megabyte. Um, it's going to bring it up to 99 megabyte, 100 megabytes. Way too large, especially for YouTube. So click it to JPEG. And this here is just going to start opening up now. Okay, so as you can see yourself, um, it's pretty bright um, considering and the blacks aren't too black and the, the whites aren't too white. Now you've got all these different filters already down here that you can choose. Yeah, you want it to click on and they're already preset, you see. So what you want to do is have a look down what way you want to do it and you're, you're more than likely you will find a filter there that that suits you you know everybody's taste is going to be different I just had it on the neutral okay so what's it in the neutral now what I do with this here you've got the brightness the contrast and the structure I go straight into the contrast and they amplify the blacks I want to push the blacks up a bit so I whack that up okay whack it up to the right and you can already see that making a difference yeah I go up to the amplify the whites pull that up Okay, um, the brightness, the levels here, the highlights, the mid-tones and, and the shadows. I'm just going to leave that as is, the structure. I'm not going to touch that either. That's sort of like sharpening the edges, that's fine. And I just click on save. Now what you're going to find here is whenever it downloads, although what you see on the screen here in the uh, Silver Fax Pro, it's slightly different when you get it offline. So we have a look here. And in itself, that's not too bad. That's a very usable uh, black and white. Now, everybody's taste is going to be different when it comes to black and white. Some people like really hard blacks and crisp whites and other people like neutral tones. The image itself is what's going to dictate. I actually prefer the color image of this, but I'm just going to use an example, but from the color to the black and white. So although that looks dead on, um, I'm just going to tweak that slightly. Now what I do is I just go up into the contrast here. Just pull it a wee tiny bit. And it wouldn't go too mad. Keep up. I think that's working so far there. And uh, the clarity and all is all fine. I'd probably just try the shadows down. And see, you can, you can see what's happening there. If I mess about with the shadows, you're going, so if I put the shadows there, if I just double click on the shadow button there, if I just bring that just down slightly, ever so slightly. Yeah. Okay. 
So I think I'm going to run with that. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put a border around it. Now, obviously in Silver Effects Pro, uh, you have actually got that option that you could put a border around it, but I don't like the border on it. You're sort of restricted uh, till the size of the borders. But if you go into the Color Effects Pro, and this is what I do at this stage. Now, because I'm working on the copy rather than making another copy, I'm just going to work on this Edit Original. Now, that's not your original photograph. That's just the, the black and white that you've just put on, okay? And it's going to be doing it as a JPEG automatically. Now these borders here, this is, um, you know, you can change this to whatever way you want. You may not even want the border. This is just going to give you an option what, you, what you're doing. So you can bring this out and into the way you want it. And this is obviously just replicating when you were shooting full frame. Years ago when you were printing, you had that uh, the black line of the, the negative frame going around. And you can change the spread, the thickness of the, the, the banner, or the, sorry, the, the border going around. And I think that there will run that. Okay, so click on save. And that's it guys. Now everybody is going to be different to your own personal taste of what you're trying to convey in your image. Um, some images work with the border, others don't. But I'm just going to give you an example now what the, these two photographs are. the original. Well, when I say the original, the original tweaked colour image. And there's the black and white, you know. And as I say, I genuinely probably prefer the color uh, because you've got the saturation, you've got the different colors of the, the Vespas and Lambrettas, and you've got the mods, the jackets, the colors there. And I think the color's working really well. But I do think the black and white is also bringing up uh, that feeling from the 1970s, even okay, the 1960s, even when you think about it, but mainly the 1970s, my era. I remember the mods in the, the 70s and early 80s up in Belfast. And uh, I'm going to, to be returning back to Belfast to live in the next couple of months. So really excited about that. And uh, so these guys here, I think it works in black and white. Uh, like tweak on it. And there you go, guys. That's exactly how I tweak the photographs. And, you know, there's probably 101, as I keep saying, 101 other ways of doing it. Um, I'm a simple type of guy and I like a simple process. And if it works, it works. And I'm sure there's a million other ways that I could probably enhance this photograph. But that's the way I do it. And I hope you found it informative and uh, useful. So there you go, guys. Listen, thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already done so, please do subscribe. You can check me out on Twitter and on Facebook. And also Rambles with my camera and Instagram. All the links are down below to social media. Uh, drop us a comment. And uh, thanks again for watching.